class. Welcome back to World History 2. Last time we looked at exploration part one, where we looked at some of the personalities of exploration. And today we're going to look at some more of the consequences of exploration in the PowerPoint entitled Exploration Part 2. All right, class, we're now moving into the PowerPoint portion of this lecture, and we'll be looking at exploration part two and uh, just some aspects of exploration that we need to mention. And we're going to talk about the capes, the straits, and the passages. And you can uh, see more details in your textbook on uh, page 490. There's a map. And you can uh, look at those uh, where uh, they're at in the textbook. Uh, but uh, we're going to look here at four uh, different aspects. First is the Cape of Good Hope. This is the southern tip of the African continent. So it'll be down where uh, South Africa is today. Uh, but that's called the Cape of Good Hope. And it became a stopping point for trading ships. It was kind of a natural place that uh, ships would stop as they uh, came around uh, to the other side of that continent. So uh, Cape of Good Hope. Uh, next is Cape Horn. Uh, this is the southern tip of the South American continent. And then we have the Strait of Magellan, which is a small natural waterway at the tip of modern-day Chile that allows ships to skip around going uh, going around uh, Cape Horn. So they can go through the Strait of Magellan, a little waterway, instead of having to go around the, the tip of uh, Cape Horn. And then the Northwest Passage is a waterway that connects the Pacific Ocean and the Arctic Ocean. And this is between present-day Alaska and Russia. And it's also known as the Bering Strait. So that was the Northwest Passage or the Bering Strait. So we're going to continue on here and talk about um, who was going to own what in the new world when, uh, when it was uh, discovered and, and the different European countries decided they wanted to get involved. And so the first thing we're talking about here is the Treaty of Tordesillas. And it was um, ratified on June 7, 1494. And it's an agreement between Spain and Portugal to divide the newly discovered American continents, or what we would call as Latin America. And this uh, treaty is going to divide up the land and who is going to have what. At first, Portugal was not very involved in settlement. However, when the French and the Dutch began to show interest, in Brazil, then Portugal colonized. And Spain became a major power because of the vast land area west of this dividing line, and that which was their designated area. So here is a map of this, kind of just a picture to show you uh, what uh, I'm talking about here with the Treaty of Tordesillas. Now, uh, you see the, the purple, solid purple line uh, here. I'll just bring my marker up on the screen. So this solid purple line right here. So basically what would happen is uh, Spain would get everything to the west of the purple line and Portugal would get everything to the east. And they didn't know how vast this was, uh, that the South American continent really was. So Portugal really only got this little piece right here. And then Spain got all the rest over here. Okay, now uh, next we're going to talk about the English East India Trading Company, which was founded in 1600. The English East India Trading Company was a group of London merchants who were granted a charter by Queen Elizabeth. And now Queen Elizabeth was daughter of Henry VIII. And under her, uh, they were given this permission to trade in the East Indies. And what they would do is they exported English goods of wool and metals to India. And there were trading agents stationed at coastal settlements in India to negotiate trade of the next incoming shipment from England. So it became organized and it became a place of trade with these coastal stations. This uh, organized, organized trade allowed for substantial increase in trade and wealth, and it helped the British government establish control over India. Now there was a rival, rival was the Dutch East India Company of 1602. Uh, the Dutch East India Company would not last, the British or the English East India Company would remain, and the English East India Company would remain a company until 1873 uh, when it was dissolved. Uh, Queen Victoria uh, was known as the Empress of India, and basically the British government took over all of that in 1873, so the, the actual East India Trading Company uh, dissolved. Usually 1591, uh, James Lancaster, he was definitely involved in the establishment of the East India Trading Company. Uh, here's a, a, a company painting of the British East India Company, and it's uh, East India Company official enjoying life. And so you can see there on the screen, the official is the one there in the kind of like the tri-corner hat with the little pigtail, and he's 
um, uh, relaxing, smoking something, and the uh, Indian uh, servants are there uh, to uh, serve him and, and get what, give what he needs and all of that. Uh, the British enjoyed uh, great status there in India. Uh, they became the masters of India, the Indian indigenous peoples. They uh, became subservient to the British because the Great Britain basically owned uh, India and, and took the resources from India and brought it back to uh, to England and we became very wealthy. So that's a 1760 painting of the East India Company. Uh, now we're going to look at this aspect of exploration which was the Columbian Exchange. And there's just a picture there of some Europeans landing and the indigenous peoples there uh, waiting for them to land. And we're going to talk about the Columbian Exchange. The Columbian Exchange was a name given to global diffusion of plants, food, animals, humans, and disease that impacted the lands that had never experienced these in their environments before. So we have uh, plants, would, food and crops would be, uh, examples would be maize, potatoes, peanuts, beans, rice, etc. Animals were horses, cattle, pigs, sheep, chickens. People would be the Europeans settling in the New World. Disease would be uh, smallpox, uh, measles, diphtheria, whooping cough, and influenza were introduced to indigenous peoples by the Europeans. And uh, smallpox basically destroyed the Aztecs and the Incas. That, that, just, that disease basically just wiped them out. And Mexico's population uh, was, was decimated because of disease. So here's just an image or a picture of uh, what went where, uh, kind of an idea. So from the European uh, aspect, you have uh, coffee beans, so I'll just bring it down here. So you have coffee beans, some different kinds of fruits, citruses, bananas, sugar cane, onion. You have different grains that were introduced. Uh, livestock would be cattle, sheep, pigs, horses. But then the big one over here with the skull and crossbones is uh, the disease, smallpox, influenza, typhus, measles, malaria, diphtheria, whooping cough. Uh, so this was brought from Europe. Now, Europeans had immunity to these diseases because these diseases have been in Europe for a while and there was immunity. But th these are new diseases for the new world. And the indigenous people, Aztecs, Incas, other indigenous peoples, they could not uh, take these diseases. It, it just wiped them out. They, they had no immunity to them. So they were um, you know, decimated. And there's some other things, onions, turnips, etc. Uh, and then from the New World, things came back to Europe. So you have tobacco and pumpkins, turkey, sweet potatoes, avocados, peppers, pineapple, um, the peanuts, potatoes, tomatoes, corn, beans, vanilla. All of this came from the New World back to Europe. And so you have this exchange going on of goods and, and obviously people and uh, and disease. So here's a an image from the Codex Florentine of 1575, and this was smallpox among the Aztecs. So this is an actual image of some art, and they, you see the person suffering from smallpox has these pox all over their bodies, and the artist actually uh, drew how they um, said it was spread, and it was uh, this is supposed to be the air. Uh, being breathed out of this person. And then the same thing here, you have air breathing out of this person here. So it kind of uh, showed how they believed it was being spread. And their belief was accurate because uh, smallpox begins with a rash or in the back of the throat or a, a sore, and it comes out from uh, moisture molecules that are coughed or sneezed or spit out. Uh, from the mouth, and then it basically would then spread. But like I said, the Aztecs had no immunity to it, so they, it just wiped them out. The population of Mexico actually collapses because of this, and you see the years at the bottom of the screen, uh, 1520, so early on, uh, you have uh, the smallpox epidemic that comes into Mexico, and there's around 8 million deaths. And then you see in 1545 what is called Cacolitli, and uh, m most... Uh, Scholars believe that this is a, probably typhus is what this is and somewhere between 12 and 15 million deaths and that's in 1545 and then in 1576 you have another bout of that 
and so that's uh, around 2 million deaths. So you see the population is more than 21 million people. It's almost 22 million people. And from 1520 to 1576, so 56 years, it just plummets and uh, the, down to well less than 2 million people. And then even goes a little further down. By 1700, there's really no recovery. 1800, just a tiny, tiny bit of a recovery um, up here until about 18. Uh, 1850 is where this graph stops probably by 1850 and there's just really no recovery for the population of Mexico it's still down here hovering around 3 million people um, over over several centuries so uh, the Colombian exchange just really uh, uh, destroys Mexico's population okay so that is it for exploration part two I'll see you in a second Okay, class, that's it for today, and that's it for our look at exploration. Next time, we're going to be looking at the first lecture on the Reformation. See you then.